Well, what do we have here? Okay, I admit, I did it. I bought something that's not an original knife, which I don't know if I've ever done before, but I have a few incoming for a few reasons. I won't go into all of that today, but this here is a built up using original parts, Victorinox Yaoman. And some of you may be asking, well, why did you do that? And the reason is because I actually like to use my knives and I wouldn't want to use an original Yao Man because they sell for between $200 and $500 new in like new in box condition. And um, I'm not interested in doing that. So let me get this out of here. So what I bought was... And I knew I was going to forget the name of this company. I think it's called um, Rebel something. I'm going to try and get the name during the during the video here. Rebel Restorations. I don't know what it's called. And I'm actually really immediately impressed. I'm, if I'm seeing this right, this looks like a lot of new, brand new parts that were used on this one. But they basically take parts from multiple knives. And they make the Yo Man or the Yao Man or however you want to pronounce it. But this is a really important knife for two reasons. One, they're really hard to get because they're retired. And two, it's one of the two models that I think these knives should have been all along for the average person that doesn't believe that a little saw that's going to cut your finger in half when you try and use it was a good idea. So we're going to get deep today on Victorinox and on models and this is going to be a conversation starter and it starts right here and the reason it starts right there is because if you understand the options in this 91 millimeter victorinox cl uh, class and we're going to go through a whole bunch of notes that i set aside for this video the 91 millimeter class is kind of your go-to sizing class <clears throat> By comparison, you may be familiar with the sort of original of this type, the classic SD, which is in the 58 millimeter class. And you may be familiar with the fact that many models came out in an 84 millimeter class, like this Wanger I have here, which is one of my original knives. And then this would be, this Yao Man would fit into the 91 millimeter class, which is kind of the go-to, a little bigger blade than the 84 but still in this format. And then here's my original Victorinox rucksack. Let's get all the logos up for consistency. And that is the 111 millimeter class uh, here. So why does it matter? Because in this 91 millimeter class, you're always limited to a few options. And one of the key ones here, and I'm really curious to see if they got a new one or if this is a bit used. It looks like it might be a bit used is the Phillips screwdriver <clears throat> not coming off of the back of the knife, which makes it very difficult to use. And so it does look like, if I can focus on it here, it's very hard to focus because the camera wants to go to other things that are bigger. Let's see if I can, see if I put it right here, it'll work. No, I'm having issues. Let me focus here and then I'll move it into focus there. So I do believe this is an example of a previously used one, but if so, it's actually in really good condition. Like I'm pretty happy with that part. So what they do is they take parts from other knives and actually so far everything feels really good. One of the things that's important here is how well do the springs actuate and work. This feels like a brand new original knife. So this is going to be one of my two go-tos. The other ones I'm looking for, the Victorinox Scientist, and I don't have one. Let me get a little cleaning on this blade and just see how it looks here. It looks like I'm, I'm going to do a little cleaning on it, but it's generally like you see some of these blades, they'll have a lot of scratches. It generally looks like an almost new blade, if not a new one. It's got a little something on it, maybe a cleaning material or something but that generally looks like a new blade and it's very sharp so that feels good and one of the things that makes this all possible if you've seen some of my other videos and others is this combo tool where they combine and i'm going to pull out 
Another example of an efficient, but not as efficient, Victorinox knife, which is the Tinker. It's a go-to knife for a lot of people. You can get this for 20 to $30, depending where you get it and when. You take these two tools, and this tool essentially does what both of those tools do. Now you lose the tiny screwdriver here, but for many people like myself, it's actually not super important. Now I do feel a little lockup issue on that tool. This feels good here, feels great, which is where it's most important. Feels good here at the, at the halfway mark. And as it comes into the knife, I felt a little, it feels a little weak on the detent coming into the knife there, but not a big deal. And then the other thing you get on this model, the Viao Man, was the scissors, which a lot of people really like. And these look like brand new scissors, so I'm excited about that. They look either unused or very lightly used. So Rebel, nice job. I'll put in the description of the video who exactly this company is that does this. So that means that you can still get the corkscrew. And this kind of brings me to um, a few things. We've talked about sizes, layers. This is a three layer knife. When you think about putting it in your pocket, you really want as few layers as possible. And what this knife does is essentially it takes one of my other favorite knives, but you know, in the existing realm, again, the trade-off of not having the combo tool and having the, the two tools here. Now this picks up some other stuff, uh, like it has a small blade, but I don't personally care. Like I don't need two blades on my knife for me. Like a lot of people say, oh, you could use the big blade for your big cuts and you know, always keep your saw blade super sharp for when you need it or for small cuts or for fruit or whatever it is. But for me, one blade on my knife is good enough. In fact, most of the time I'm carrying, you know, my Demco here and that's just one blade. So not a problem. Um, so the Explorer, this is the Swiss Army Explorer, is a, another great alternative that comes with that brilliant um, screwdriver in the actual knife, so it's much more useful. But then you also still get your corkscrew. Um, and so you can kind of see a little difference there. And I don't know if it's just condition or year. I think during through different years, they built these screwdrivers a little differently, but the screwdrivers look a tiny bit different there. It's almost a little wider on this one. But the Explorer is a four layer. So that's, you know, a significant amount more room. You're talking 20% total, including the scales, more room in your pocket. You know, 25% in terms of the actual layers themselves, more room needed. Um, the Yao Man, because of that combined tool, uh, you know, does pretty much everything that does. Now the Yao Man doesn't have the uh, awl. So you do lose a couple tools, you know, the, the extra blade, the awl, and the, you know, really that smaller screwdriver. And, you know, you might argue that this, these tools do what they do better as dedicated tools or whatever. But for me personally, like it's 2022, I'm not opening cans with my Victorinox knife. So, um, this Yao Man, three layers. They also have the uh, the actual mini mini screwdriver. So if you really need a mini screwdriver for glasses or something like that, this can play that role without having to use the the other additional tool. Super efficient knife. So this brings me to doing a massive review because I wanna. This video is gonna I think be named something like the Yao Man and everyone that's trying to be like it. Um, because this is the knife that you want Victorinox to still sell new, but for some reason they don't, probably because it takes up too much of their other business. <clears throat> so there's that one. Now the scientist is this knife without the scissors. I believe it's almost everything the same, but without the scissors. So it's a two layer model. And if you think about two layer models today, there's not, there are not a lot actually that do a lot of things. So there's the compact, which is super expensive. Um, let me, Pull that one out here. Where's my compact? Here we go. Here's the compact. The compact trades off, unfortunately, that Phillips for the corkscrew. And for me, the Phillips is priority over corkscrew. So if I'm going two layers, now the benefit is in two layers, this also has a scissors, uh, which is awesome. You know, so if you really care about the scissors, the compact, if scissors and corkscrew is your thing, then that's it. So this brings me to choices here. So 
you kind of have to trade off saw or scissors. And there's some good models. Like if you really like, Victorinox is really good for people that like a saw and a corkscrew. If you like a saw and a corkscrew, there's still some pretty good models out there that are fairly efficient. Um, the compact also adds in this little, I think it's like a diamond. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get zoomed in there and focused like a diamond um, file, a nail file there on the back of the uh, the hook. But the hook's a fairly useless tool. Like people have to really stretch their imagination on how to use that tool these days, at least. I'm sure it maybe had its place 100 years ago when these companies started. Vanger was started under, and I remember the acronym, but not the name of that company, a different name, 1893, Victorinox, 1907. And then Victorinox took over Vanger 2005 when uh, just a, shortly after 9-11 because people couldn't carry pocket knives on planes anymore. And then in 2014, there's a full merger. And at that point, you saw this Vanger logo go away. Um, I have two original, like this is an Eddie Bauer version, but made by Vanger here. And then I have um, a couple new in box as well from uh, a 58 millimeter and uh, another 84 millimeter commander. So the commander's like my, uh, uh, now I just blanked on the name here. Um, we'll see if it comes back to me, but like this one, but with a corkscrew, um, trailblazer, but with a corkscrew. <clears throat> So we're going to talk through a lot of this. Uh, the, com the compact, this is the Tinker. So the Tinker, this is the compact. You get the, the uh, uh, screwdriver on this. You get the corkscrew on this. And all here, a hook and file here. Scissors here in a combo tool. And then on the Tinker, you get the two tools here and then the two blade configuration. So if you want that extra blade, I mean the Tinker for a two layer is a really great option. So two layer options, we'll throw these over here. We're gonna move some of these classics out. One layer options. So we're going backwards a little bit and then we'll go back up to three layer. Two of my favorites, the waiter, uh, which the waiter has a blade and a combo tool. So it's one of the rare knives that they sell today with a combo tool. I'm um, sorry if you hear my three-year-old crying in the background there. He sounds like he's hungry. Um, and then you get the uh, the um, corkscrew and you know all these models are gonna come with uh, in these original type scales, the uh, tweezers and the uh, um, toothpick here. So tweezers, toothpick, and then in the Alox version, um, which you're going to lose everything on the back on the locks versions, but this is just a brilliantly thin knife to me and super cool. You get the big blade and that combo tool, which sometimes like for opening packages and stuff, I kind of like to use that to keep some of the gunk off of the, the blade itself. mentioned there. You're having some challenges. Um, the other option on the one layer, uh, which you don't come across often, is the Bantam. So it's, it's very similar to this, but you then pick up the ability to get the uh, tweezers and the toothpick, and then you get the uh, combo tool and the blade. So it's basically the similar to this, but you pick up the tweezers and the, uh, the, tweezers and the um, toothpick there. So that's the one layer options the two layer options and there are many more out there so don't get me wrong but these are the ones that i've gravitated to what i consider some of the best uh best of class or best most efficient useful options here um we're going to kind of leave the 58 millimeters out but there are a lot of like very thin you know one or two layer 58 millimeter options and one of the things that you'll learn about the 58 millimeter options is they don't have the divisions between the tools, so they're actually really efficient. They're very weak though, um, but there are some cool ones out there that have, you know, various different configurations that are very useful. So you can get 58 millimeters. You can get some pretty thick 58 millimeters too, like this Midnight Manager that has a, uh, a flashlight on there, which is pretty cool. 
you use the actual logo as the flashlight. So that's fun. And let's go into the three layers, which get really interesting. So Explore is a four layer, we'll leave that out for a sec. The three layer Yao Man, if you can find one, is you know the go-to most efficient. Um, here we have a, a three layer, which is the, the Hyper. And again, if you love you know, a saw, they can be pretty efficient. So the Hyper has the Phillips <clears throat> and it has a saw here. Where is my saw? Sorry, I need to come around the camera and find it. Okay, it's on this side over here. And it's a pretty like thin tool, so they're able to be pretty efficient with this one. But again, you know, you're not getting that combo tool, so it's just a little thicker for what it is. But a good like, this is like, it's called a hiker for a reason. It's a good like outdoors knife. It's not like as good of a around the house knife, but a very good outdoors knife. I've actually noticed it's actually a little thinner, just a little bit thinner than the Yao Man as well, because I think the Yao Man has, um, you know, uh, the, the magnifying glass and the screwdriver are a little thicker than that uh, saw. So that's interesting. But Hiker is a good, a good uh, uh, three layer tool there. And then you have um, uh, the Super Tinker, which I think is, you know, one of the best three layer tools out there in the current the current lineup. So Super Tinker, like the Tinker, is going to give you the two blades and it gives you the scissors, which a lot of people say they can't live without. On the back you're getting a hook and an awl, so there's actually quite a bit there and this is a screwdriver tool. Anything with Tinker and it's screwdriver, so there's also the Tinker Deluxe, which we'll look at on the four layer tools that has a wrench. So those are three really great examples of three layer tools. These are all again in the 91 millimeter class um, across here. And then these over here on the, um, the one layer are 84 millimeter class. So 84 millimeter and everything else is pretty much 91 millimeter until you get up to the big boys uh, like that one. So four layer, for me, the ultimate four layer is the Explorer. Um, you do get the two additional tools, which is why I feel like this is inferior to the Yao Man, because you, you pick up an awl, but that's pretty much it. You get the two tools plus the awl, and I guess the additional blade, but for me, this is a much less efficient version of the same thing. You know, you're talking about, oh, oops, sorry, grab the wrong one here, Yao Man. Um, about a 20% reduction in size to go Yao Man versus the Explorer. So I can pocket this. I can barely stand a three layer in my pocket. I really can't do a four layer. This is a desk knife for me. It sits there at my desk where I do a lot of my stuff. You've seen my desk in the Figured Maple and the other videos. <clears throat> um, so the four layer for me, the Explorer is the best because you're picking up that, you're still getting the screwdriver in the tool and you're getting the, uh, um, more modern in this version, um, magnifying glass, which is actually quite useful. It's a really good magnifying glass. We'll see if we can use, uh, do this on the video here. Bear with me for focus. But it's actually a really good magnifying glass that really works. And I don't know if I can do it well on video and do it any justice, but there you go. It actually really works. Is it really nice for splinters and stuff? Especially if you're a little older like myself, I'm not in my 80s or anything, but I'm not the spring chicken I once was. And that's a really neat and nice, uh, nice to have thing. And it complements the screwdriver. So if you're gonna have a screwdriver and you need something wide, I actually really like the magnifying glass as an option. So we'll go, these are the, the three layers, two layer, one layer, 58 millimeter. Now let's start working on the four layers. So now, if you're, I'm sorry, I totally missed one of the key three layers, and I did it because this is a very interesting tool and it's very efficient. So this is the the uh, Pioneer X Alox. What is the Pioneer X? The X stands for 
the scissors, uh, representing the shape of the scissors uh, that you have in here. Now the locks are very cool for a lot of reasons, but some people don't like them because you don't get the tools on the back or the tools in the scales. Uh, you can also see there's some inefficiencies in the way they stack some of the tools, like it's hard to get the scissors out of this tool, I find. Um, they also have a very a, a harder detent, um, so as you pull it in and out on these tools, they're quite a bit harder. But this isn't necessarily a tool for me. I think it's just one of the more beautiful tools that they've ever made. So this one to me is more of a collector for me personally. Um, to each their own. A lot of people carry locks. They, you know, it is a nicer tool to have. The other benefit is when you drop them, they have. Um, uh, um, rivets so they don't pop off like these which are um you know the regular scales are put on by just pressure um they just have a you know basically a uh, um squeeze together method i don't know how to best put it but basically you have a um a little piece that sticks up a little round knob that sticks up and then the plastic wraps around it and kind of holds onto it for you um so it's a much ro more robust knife and you lose some things because of that in the way that this is put together, but it is a, a different approach. Now, the Alox in this version, not in this version, but in this version, is a 93 millimeter. So it's actually slightly taller than the others. Slightly taller. And so I said here, main size is 58, 84, 91, 111 with the 91 millimeter in the Alox. So that's why I kind of forgot to include that in the uh, in the three layers. One other thing to note, versus the Yao Man, as an example, these are super efficient because they don't have the, um, you know, uh, on the outside, they don't have the uh, divisions, and I just forgot the name of this, which is embarrassing, but they don't have the uh, um, layer divisions like you do in the middle here, but not on the edges because the metal ends up playing that role you can't do that with plastic so you you actually pick up a couple millimeters of efficiency there among other things these are already thinner and they're not accommodating you know these end tools that have to slide in here so they're just very efficient in terms of a three layer here is actually more like a two and a half layer almost like a two layer in fact let's put it up against the two layer because it may end up being the same I'm not doing a good job of lining up my logos here So yeah, I mean, it's very close. And depending on which model you have, like this compact here, it's almost the same as the compact there. Like negligible difference. Um, so very efficient to get a locks, but you lose some tools on that side. So sorry about that, but on to the four layer tools. We talked about the Explorer. The other, uh, I think, exciting one for me is the Deluxe Tinker. You still get the uh, screwdriver on the back, the awl and the hook for whatever it's worth. Uh, again, not having the combo tool makes it a little wider, but one of the cool things about this knife, and there are a few others like this, like the Mechanic, are really nice little pliers. And although it looks kind of like a standard pliers, I would think of this as being like a, almost like a modified um, needle nose pliers because they're really quite thin and you're not going to really wrench on anything. But if you need to grab onto something more like a needle nose pliers tip would so i say modified because in the middle here you kind of have the gap and on it, you know it's they're doing what they can with the size but it's not your like you're going to have a fraction of a typical plier strength you still get the scissors that you got on the uh on the tinker uh super tinker and then you get the two blades because that's the tinker standard right big blade small blade so to me, one of the better four layer tools, but I put it behind the Explorer um, because for me having the screwdriver here versus there and having the, um, um, this configuration to me is more valuable because you're picking up also a, a, a corkscrew, which, you know, although it's not my go-to, I have a corkscrew. Usually if I'm drinking wine, I need a corkscrew. I'm like at home and I have my corkscrew right there in the kitchen. I can just pop open the drawer and use it, right? But this configuration to me with the magnifying glass and the screwdriver here is more useful on a daily basis. I actually leave this Super Tinker or Tinker Deluxe in my car because for bike stuff, it's actually a pretty good tool along with my bike multi-tool. 
because uh, of the pliers. So let's put that aside. Those are two of my favorite four layer tools. The Explorer being a tad bit thinner there, it looks like, than the uh, Super Tinker, or than the Tinker Deluxe. Sorry, I'm going through so many models. Now, the Huntsman would be one of the others that I consider, and at the probably the most reasonable price of the four layers, to be a good one if you're again in the uh, thinking that having a corkscrew and a saw are the things you need. So like as an outdoors tool for someone that's spending a lot of time outdoors, this is a very efficient four layer tool. You get the two blades like you do on the tinker, the saw, and the um, uh, scissors, which I think is cool to have the scissors in there as well. So for an outdoors tool, this is a very nice four layer option. I'm gonna try and keep moving here because I now I've dra dragged you down quite a bit and I want to uh, to get through this all. One last tool before we uh, kind of move on and just jump back into the Yao Man, uh, which is the, and I have a funny version of it here, not a funny version, but um, you know, the, a different version. I have it in Silver Tech because I was just looking for a reason to have this knife. Um, it is, and it is beautiful in Silver Tech. It is just a really cool tool, but it's a massive, you know, some people can put this in their pocket or maybe you can throw it in a backpack or something. This is the Swiss champ in uh, in um, Silver Tech. And you can get this in the red too, of course, but you're adding in basically everything from all those knives where you get the pliers in there. Um, you're getting both the screwdriver in tool and the, uh, um, and the uh, magnifying glass. You're getting both of these because they're not worried about space here. You're getting both blades, and I'm pretty sure you have, uh, yeah, you have the saw. And I think over here, let me just take a closer look. Yeah, you have a really nice file, both the nail file and it has like a jagged file down here. So that's a really nice tool um, you have for the fishermen in the family, um, both a measuring tool, uh, inches, millimeters or centimeters rather and a fish scaler you know this is adding in the works so not for everyone um on the back side you're also picking up beyond the y'all the all and the you know the multiple tools here you're picking up um uh like a very small screwdriver there and i don't even really know what you use this for but it's almost like a like i almost liken it to like a uh Gosh, I don't even know what to describe it, but almost like a scraping tool or something like that. So that's kind of uh, an interesting couple of additions. Also on a few of these knives, like the Compact, you pick up a very stealthy needle in here, which is kind of cool. Um, for whatever you might need to use it for, it can definitely help. You take that, plus the tweezers, plus the magnifying glass, and you should be good for getting a splinter out. Um, and this one doesn't have the plus scales, but there are some versions like the compact, which I should have mentioned when I went through it, that do have um, a pen in there as well. So that's kind of cool. For a two layer, the compact really is compelling aside from blocking a, screw, a Phillips screwdriver, which is why I no longer carry that. That was like my carry for a minute and just so many screwdrivers missing periods later, I just had to get rid of it. So this would be like the maybe at the, the top of the stack here. Still in a 91 millimeter configuration, but you're getting into one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, it's kind of funny how the tools set up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers on the Swiss champ. So let me... Uh, Zoom out a tad more here. In short, in short, I don't think you can say that at this point in a video like this, but in conclusion, perhaps, um, the Yao Man's really exciting. And um, although it doesn't do everything that every one of these tools does, it is like this great all around tool um, for a three layer. So the next one I would be sourcing is a scientist, which takes out the scissors from this. 
Um, but this is, I've been looking for one and I just, A, I couldn't justify carrying a brand, you know, a brand new inbox one. So I'm still trying to find one just as a collector. Uh, the Yao Man, by the way, is also a, a plus scale tool um, along with the compact. So it does have the pen there, which is cool. Now I'm wondering if it has the, I don't even know, but I assume, yep, it also has the, uh, the needle there. I don't even know if that's original. I assume it is, but I have to do some research on whether it had those tools. But I think it's called Rebel Restorations or something along those lines. I'll have to look it up and put it in the comments. Did a really nice job on this. You literally, it feels as good or better than anything here in terms of all these others are pretty much brand new. There's a few of these I've carried. Obviously, some of these that I had for a long time, but you know, I've only carried maybe five of these that are out here. So the rest are new and this feels just as good on everything except for the final D10 of that just doesn't snap back like I normally would see. We can maybe even see where it's happening on the other side. If you don't know, when you open these tools, you can see what's going on on the other side of the knife. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on there. It's not terrible, it's fine, it really doesn't matter. Um, but a really nice job here on this and a really cool knife that I'm excited to finally have this configuration. Um, at the time of this video, I paid about a hundred bucks for this uh, on eBay, which for what it is, is much less than a brand, you know, if I were trying to find a brand new one in box in the same condition. And again, it's gonna be hard for me as a collector to actually use a knife like this. Some people don't mind paying, you know, three, $400 for a knife that's a collector knife and actually using it. For me, it's just not really how I work. So this could be a user for me. Um, and I'm gonna try and find the scientist, which actually is something I would EDC a scientist more because of the two layer config, you know, like the compact, but with a screwdriver, or this is a, super, a tinker, so it'd be like a tinker, but the scientist is more like a compact in terms of having the, the combo tool, um, which I could see doing an EDC again. But I've kind of gone away from EDC of those knives. Now, I thought it'd be good as a final part of this video to kind of compare this to some other EDCs that you may have seen on the channel. And you can see compared to like a Bug Out Mini, that series, the 91 millimeter series is very similar. Um, in a lot of ways, you know, very different in a lot of ways, of course, but blade length, knife size overall, I found that to be a very similar format, the wee banter um, as well, in terms of fairly similar sizing. By comparison, a more commonly known knife would be a bug out full size here. And you can see how that compares the bug out full size being quite a bit bigger there than the Yao Man. Um, obviously completely different tools and knives here, but I um, thought it'd be kind of interesting to put up the sizing since there's some people on the channel, obviously that come from more of the EDC world. Um, let's throw the uh, 8022.5 in there as well. So that'd be obviously much bigger, much bigger than the Yao Man in terms of uh, almost like three quarters of an inch bigger on the handle alone. So um, excited to have this, been trying to source one of these for a while and um, finally found one on eBay that I could just tell from the pictures. They took really nice pictures. I was like, wow, that looks like it's brand new. and. Yeah, it looks like they used almost all new parts here, except for maybe this screwdriver. I'm gonna have to really take a look at that and see if I can tell. Maybe this screwdriver is not new, but it might be. It's at least very close to new if it's not. So I'm gonna take that one offline, try and take a look at it. Looks like it might be used, but it's hard to say. So, you know, considering what it would take to make this knife, which is you basically have to buy a $50 compact and a, gosh, what would you, you'd use a compact plus an Explorer's 50, like you couldn't buy the two knives new that you need to build this for less than I 
bought this for combined into the one tool that I actually want. So to me, it's a really cool tool there. Um, and uh, I'm excited to have it. So I knew at some point I was going to do one of these videos and talk about the Victorinox series. By the way, I gravitate towards Victorinox because I like the way that they do a lot of their things better than what Banger did. Banger does have some very, very cool and nice knives also. They're just not, not for me so much. Like, you know, everyone's going to have their things that they look for, but that's uh, not the one for me. And I don't really talk about the 58 millimeter ones because I just think it's such a, you know, it can do what you need it to, but it's such a different class of knife. It's almost not a knife. Like it's like a, you know, it barely works. So it, it works, but it's like, you know, they're different. So we'll leave the 58 millimeters out of the conversation for today. Uh, let's get these out of here. And um, I'm gonna put in some final thoughts here. Um, I love, I'd love if Victorinox, if you're listening out there, I'd love if they brought this back along with the scientist. I think that those are two of the best all around knives in terms of efficiency and usefulness in EDC, everyday carry. Um, I'm super happy with the purchase based on what I ended up with. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes from here. I'll do maybe a more long-term review later, but for like an unbox and comparison and the I want to do a video on why would you buy this knife? Why would you go through what I did to source it? And, you know, what would be the, the use case for it? So hopefully that's helpful. Um, sorry for the background noise. We had a little bit of a, a breakdown with the three-year-old. Um, so hopefully that wasn't too disruptive. It did make me lose my train of thought a little bit. So if I'm a little all over the place in this video, um, try doing this and uh, having a three-year-old in the room right next to you. It's uh, definitely challenging. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if so, please like, subscribe, please correct any of the data. Like there's a lot of history here. Um, a lot of knives, a lot of versions ended up on the table. I'm sure I may have made some mistakes. Feel free to correct those in the comments and uh, we will see you on the next one. Thanks and take care.